everyone loves stickers. Uh, you can hand a kid from seven year old to a 70 year old and they're gonna love a sticker. And it's just a little piece of paper with some sticky stuff on the back, boom. But you can reach a lot of people. Stickers is like a mini canvas. You get to put what you want into it, and then you get to put it out there for them to see. You know, it's just like walking and breathing. If I'm out and I'm anywhere, I'm stickering. One thing about sticker culture and exchanging stickers with artists that you admire, it does cut the distance between you and the artists that you admire. I can collect a sticker from a handful of my favorite artists from around the world and hit the streets tonight, get them up with my stickers, and I feel that I'm part of this family, I'm part of this community. I'm part of their art, and in a way, it's like a collaboration. I think that putting up a sticker, there's a, not a show of force, but a, a show of defiance, you know, and a show of self-identity, that I need to impose who I am on uh, the social system which is what graffiti is, which is what skateboarding is, which is what punk rock is, which is what hip hop is, probably what being a jazz musician was. You know, all these things are the struggle between one's own self-identity or a, a, a tribal self-identity versus the mass social system. One of the earliest stickers that I saw, and this was long before I even realized what was going on, is I would see the uh, Andre the Giant sticker around LA. But I was like, man, I gotta have this. I'm seeing this all over LA. I don't know what it is, but I want it. Yeah, shortly after that, I realized, hey, there's, there's a movement going on out there. When I first started making stickers in 1989, there was no internet. So sending envelopes of stickers to people, that was a way to socialize and the way to create, you know, in, in a way, a, a, a punk rock chain letter. You know, I would send my manifesto and stickers and people would give them to their friends because I wasn't charging for them. They were generous with each other. You know, here, take a few of these. I know a guy that has this weird concept. He's spreading these stickers around. I always encouraged people to help me put my stickers up. In fact, I would send a proof sheet, which was just an eight and a half by 11 of stickers. So you could just take it to Kinko's and run off your own sheet of stickers. When the first wave of truly independent underground clothing companies and brands started, well, you have to first understand there was no internet and the stickers served as a uh, affordable, built for speed way in which you could not just get your name out there, but uh, share it. There was a, not only an exchange of ideas, but there was an exchange of product too, you know. Uh, so stickers like t-shirts and affordable clothing was something we could all just give each other and share. And it was a different kind of business card to hand out your stickers back then. One thing that we always try to keep with us is, is I always, I've always been a, have this thing about having cool stickers because it's something that you can give to people or sell to people that they put it up somewhere and there's a little bit, little piece of you in all of those places. As soon as I walk into a dressing room, I always look around like, any of my friends been here? I'm looking at all the stickers, you know? It's funny. Whenever I walk the streets, I'm constantly scanning. Like, keep track of who's who and who's where. So I'll be, let's say, in Hong Kong, and I saw a sticker from somebody that was also in London and also in Paris, also in like this weird back alley that I shouldn't or nobody should really be in, but it's like, hey, I was here, you know? It's like a little tribe. Some other artists that I know only wanted a sticker of theirs to be up if they put it up. I 
encouraged other people to join in to my project. And, you know, I ended up having people from bands, other artists, people from, from fledgling skateboard companies, people sending me stickers. It became, you know, a really, really fun back and forth. I do trades all the time, <laughs> all the time. It's like collecting something, collecting like dolls or like a G.I. Joe figure. Like you see it on the street, you're like, oh man, I want to, I, wish I, I wish I can get that. And you have a show and people will instantly want to either buy your sticker or collect it somehow because they see it you know, every day or they walk past it all the time. So it's like a collectible almost. This sort of passion or interest network that happened around stickers and sort of the the trading, the collecting, the sharing of them, um, and be able to have conversation after you've left and kind of leave your, you know, leave your, your identity or your DNA, a little touch of it, wherever you were. That was the part of the whole sticker community, and that's how it got built up. People had the same idea I had of just, I want to make stickers, of putting characters on stickers, not necessarily all graffiti, and we're just gonna trade and we're gonna put your stickers up on my city and you're gonna put my stickers up in your city. And uh, right now it's just like a storm. I see my stickers everywhere from Iraq, <laughs> Jerusalem, uh, I've seen my stickers up in uh, South Africa. I've seen my stickers up in Hong Kong. I've seen my stickers up in Mexico, Brazil. I've seen my stickers up in France, England, Germany. I've seen my stickers up in Russia, and I've never visited any of those places. And yet, from where I live in Hollywood to all those places, uh, it's, it's pretty unique, it's pretty exciting. And uh, it's, that's what makes me excited about street stickers in general. And I think that's what gets a lot of people excited about street stickers. <laughs>